But I want to find out about the junior club of this next guest who has, tell you what, one of the great signings. And this club is just, I'll tell you what, if, if rugby league fire. clubs, Michelle, were on the stock market, you just got to buy I'm shares. buying a share. You I'm buying buy. a share. You have or to. Two. You have to. Maxwell David King, a.k.a. Maxi King, joins the run home with Joel and Michelle. G'day, Max. Hi, guys. How are you? Welcome to fatherhood, I must say. Congratulations, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah, no, she's been she's been um, a busy last couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, the sleep's been – I'm a bit sleep deprived at the minute, but um, soldiering on. So tell me all about that. Yeah. Who's the are you are you the hands on? I know was it Mitchell Moses who doesn't change the baby's nappy? Are you like hands on? You into it? Um, yeah, I am. Unfortunately, I, I uh, fractured my scaphoid, so I'm trying to. I've been fortunate enough to milk it from the missus about changing nappies <laughs> like for the it. last um, two weeks. So and she's off it. She's burning. So um, I had my fiberglass cast put on um, yesterday, and that's. I'm back. I'm back in. I'm back in business now. So um, she'll be happy. I'm changing nappies, um, but I'm I'm pretty hands on. I I pretty much do everything besides from, obviously the breastfeeding. <laughs> Max, we're chatting with Max King. Uh, Bulldogs. Uh, what a great signing. Gus and the crew have come up with there. Now I just want to just. I, I think I've pieced something together. Um, Pyro Hercules. He was the uh, the famous. Uh, what do you call him? Uh, detective. Pyro Hercules. Uh, your son is named Hercules Maxwell King. Your name is Maxwell David King. Your dad is the great David King. Is David's middle name John? I'm just, I just—I think I've pieced this puzzle together. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we were. Um, we were going <laughs> to go with no middle name, but then I thought, you know what? I know a great bloke called Maxwell in myself, so I thought <laughs> if he. If he grows up to be some uh, a man of character like me, I thought I'll be pretty happy. So let's put. You Maxwell could have popped a smart in there, <laughs> Maxwell Smart. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. I I, I could. I've, I like the name Maximus, but then I couldn't call him Maximus because then it looks like he's a Max Junior. So yeah. yeah. Have you had he a went D- with the name Hercules? I'm not talking about Hercules. I'm talking about you personally, Max. Have you had a DNA yeah. test? Because your grandfather. The father of David is the great Johnny King. Now, I don't know if many people would know this. We need to celebrate this more. But Johnny King was involved in seven of the 11 Dragons premierships, which I'm sure you know about that. And I'm sure you know about what I'm about to say. But we have been waxing lyrically because it's an unbelievable uh, – and there's a bit of a link here too, by the way. So you're playing now with Stephen Crichton, who has yes. scored in the last four grand finals. Do you know what I'm about to say? Will he overtake the record? And who's got the record? Johnny King. How many's Johnny King got? Hang on, is this uh, a Q and A? Am I missing this segment? Well, <laughs> he's scored seven in seven, but he's scored in six of them. Yes, and he's he got a double in in one of them. Correct, correct. So we're chatting with Max King, who is the grandson of Johnny King. That's right, Max, isn't it? Yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and Johnny King has the record. So w- there have been 10,000 players in the National Rugby League. Johnny King has the record for the most tries scored in consecutive grand finals, which is six. Stephen Critter Crichton, a teammate of yours, has four. Now, the reason I asked about the DNA test, Max, <laughs> you haven't scored for five years. <laughs> Yeah, she's been a long drought. Oh, that's cool. And I get reminded about it every week from my um, from my grandfather. So, have you done um, lots of nudies? Yeah. Is that still a thing? I haven't. No, it's not. And and oh, like I, I'm a big fan of I like I, I I like all the you know the dress up on Mad Monday. Yeah. It's all go. It's 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 as we you know get. It's all it's all going out the window. But that's one thing I am super thankful for that. The nudies have dropped off. Yeah. So it, it's too, you know, it's too politically incorrect. It's, you know, it's a uh, year. So, mate, I've been blessed there. I've hey, been really fortunate. Hey, Max, I, I, I love the law of attraction. I, I do believe in it. If you think about it enough, it can happen. And I, there's no reason why it can't happen. So premierships are one on typically a team who wins the comp or be in a grand final, a top two defence, which is absolutely the case for Canterbury. Goal line defence has been superb. But just imagine, Max that you're alongside Stephen Crichton and you're there the day he he equals your grandfather's record, Johnny King, for scoring a try in six consecutive 
grand finals. Could you just imagine that story where his grandson is in the team when that happens? Even better, even better. So to, to level up with Johnny King, Max King barges over in two years' time for the grand final. <laughs> oh, nice. And yeah, you nice. look like for Critter yeah. to equal your you know, grandfather. Yeah. It's funny. I, I um, My old man loves it to tell me the history of the, of the family, um, live the, relive the glory days after yeah. a couple of beers. But he, um, <laughs> yeah, I, we, we've spoken about it a lot and, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. That'd be one, that'd be one record that I think my, um, my grandfather would love to be broken. Yep. Just obviously, you know, now I'm, I'm a part of, yeah. I'm, I'm in Crichton's team. You know, I can be a part of it. Wow. There you go. Max, look, this is probably a little bit politically incorrect, but I do need to say you're batting. Um, really? Your wife, your partner. Wow. How many She's... people are Googling like me right now? Let's do no. this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's Google. But um, I did want to talk to you about uh, football, believe it or not, and the Bulldogs uh, and Critter, uh, just what he's been able to bring back from, from, from origin. Um, you know, he's been a huge signing for you guys. Uh, there was a lot of sort of people questioning whether or not he was good captaincy material. He ticks absolutely every box, doesn't he, Critter? And he's just, he knows when to turn it on. Um, he's always good for a laugh, but he's just been awesome for that club. Yeah, he's, he's been awesome. And I, I wouldn't have a bad word to say about him. And I, I understand, like, you know, going through the, in the preseason, there was a bit of that chat. And and it's only because, you know, they, they may look at his age or his, or, or whatever it might be. But I feel like everyone in the building was. Um, really confident, you know, for um, to be led un- under Crichton. With respect to Reed and Birdo, our last captains, and I feel yeah, like they've course. done a great job this year and, and, like, even stepped up in their leadership from last year um, without the captaincy role. Um, but, yeah, I, I, Crichton, he's, he's just, like, I, I don't know how old he is, whatever, 23, or he's, he's – it's like he's, you know, he's – it's like um he's got the wisdom of Cameron Smith, you know, mm. he's mm. – He's he's such a um, people person, you know. He's he's um, all he's he's he trains at excellence every day. He's he's all for the small details and things. Um, yeah, uh, you know the list goes on, you know, and and it's not just leadership. Obviously, he he leads on the field, which is something you know we really needed from from last year. You know, where we we're at, we needed sort of leaders that would step up on the field with performances. And yeah, you're right. He's ticked every box, so. Um, it's it's great to see him reap the rewards on the state of origin level, and him to get um, public recognition and, and the accolades he has been yeah, on a, on a um, higher level of that, um, just because he's he's been doing such a great job, you know, and, and a big reason for this um, club success this year. Hey Max, it feels like one of those comps very winnable, and uh, people. Clubs are saying and teams are saying and fans are saying, well, we're getting this guy back, we're getting this guy back. But it's a bit like Hungry Hippo. Like it's, you may say you're getting them back, but you're not to know you're not going to lose someone else. You're out injured at the moment. The question I'm going to ask you is, it feels like a gettable year. What, why couldn't you? Because one, one thing that you would not yet have experienced, uh, I don't even know if you've seen, you probably haven't even seen it. You're so young you wouldn't have seen it because Canterbury haven't had the glory days for so long. But if you run into September and the Canterbury Bulldogs are up and about, that tsunami of that 18th player or the 19th player being the Canterbury fan, the fans, anything's – dreams are free, Max. So is there – tell us why you can't go as far as you want to go. No, you're exactly right. And, and this is my third year third year here. Yeah. And, you know, the last two years have been have been hard for sure. So I couldn't imagine, you know, being a fan of the – being a fan at the club for the last 10 years. You yeah. know, it would have it been – but you're right. It's such a sleeping giant – um, of a of a fan club, um, and, and I think it shows in in our home record. You're right about you know the 18th man. You know we undefeated from home, and and a, a large part of that is you know you, you feel the energy of the crowd, you feel the fans cheering your home. It, yeah, it, it it is different, and I, I think I think looking at the draw, you know where we're at, um, the teams we have to verse, even heading into the finals, I feel like it's such a um, it's such a who shows up on the day type comp, and um, I feel like you know we, we've played in uh, what feels like big games, and, mm. and feel like when you look at the the top four and and um, Storms, Penrith, all those type, I feel like we you know we can match it against them. So you know we we like to think you know we're 
um, can beat anyone any day. But also in saying that, you know, we can lose to anyone on any day, and that's the that's the importance of showing up and, and preparing each week. And um, yeah, I feel like the NRL season is is such a grind. It's such a flog of a week in week out. You know, you have to be on. And um, yeah, I think it's going to take that. You know, for the next um, seven weeks or until semi-finals to be there and then obviously take it week by week, you know, in semis. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the belief is in the side and um, it, it's it's exciting where this club's going for sure. Max, you've got no idea the tsunami, and I've seen it firsthand, of those Canterbury Bulldogs come September, the fans. I remember, I'll tell you what, uh, Broncos are taking on the Bulldogs this week. You talk about 1998. So 1998 was the first time where after Super League and the ARL they came back together and the tsunami, and I saw it firsthand, they bundled us up out of the Dragons. The, dr- the Bulldogs made the grand final from ninth position to take on the might of the Broncos mm. in that grand final at halftime, I think, led 12-10. So anything could happen. Uh, oh, Michelle, um, yeah. our, our man, Max, we're chatting with Max King. Max King and the Bulldogs, uh, very, very refreshing player to speak to, very honest. And I love how you've shared that, Max, that anyone can beat you also. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, this That's mighty ride. News. Exactly, Michelle. <laughs> the bad news is uh, just search Max's wife on Insta. He's batting 100%. That's from yeah. the Switch Bulldog. <laughs> Look, they are pouring in. Uh, Western Eagle says punching hard. Yeah. <laughs> You're on a good thing. You're on a winner. That, that's a good thing. I, I, I always said, like, obviously with, with the birth of our son, I said, I've always said, hey, I hope he has her looks and my personality yeah. because oh, I've obviously done nice. something well to bat above me, about above my weight. So yep. I'll take that. Yeah. Now I agree with that, uh, Maxie. By the way, what, how long are you out for? Um, I, I got I got my cast on off in about three weeks, and yeah. maybe maybe oh, another week or two off that uh, after that. Sorry. So um, you circled a match, yeah, a, a match in particular. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, unofficially, without speaking to the specialist, they'll probably be ringing me after this saying, what the hell are you talking about? You know, <laughs> but I, I'm thinking maybe round 25. Ooh. Where's your skateboard? My, my young bloke's just broken his thumb. That's, his wrist. It's, 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 it's your wrist. wrist. Is it your wrist? I might need to get it? a... It's your wrist. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, there you go. It's, um, the, the drama is um, it's a, it's a blood flow. It's There's a problem with the blood flow there. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be a drama. So it was only a little hairline fracture, and it actually... Obviously, it was sore, but it wasn't. I broke my hand a couple of weeks ago, like it was a little fracture in my hand um, two months before that, and it was, that was sore. That was throbbing. And, and But this one wasn't too bad, but it's just the importance of this bone supposed to be important. It's a blood flow thing, and apparently they're really, um, yeah, it's just it's just a, a really important bone. It wasn't really any questions. It, was, it had to get a screw in it and um, cast it up in six weeks. So that was the drama of it. Hey, Max, uh, I, I agree with what you said, and uh, I'm also in that same uh, uh, portal when it comes to batting above the averages, or well, many people say that. And when they say that, Max, I'd love your thoughts on that. When they say you're batting over your average, right, and Michelle, you can chime in here, are they saying you've got a beautiful wife, or they are they saying to us... We've got a headlock, a drop pie. What, what are they actually well, saying? Well, I'll chime in and say it's probably the way that people – It's that's that's the perception. But, mm. you know, in terms of Max, he goes all right. He bats yeah. all right as well. Well, he, he goes all right, yeah. yeah there you go. That's yeah, from me. Didn't but I'm an old well, woman. I don't matter. How, how, how I read that, Max, was uh, you're not a bad type, but I've got a headlock, a drop pie. Thank you, Michelle. Um, <laughs> Before- Just before you go, I do want to ask one more question, and that is, of course, about uh, the coach, Cam Seraldo, and just how much he's changed uh, in this second year. Obviously, seeing a, a bit of a turnaround on the field, it was always going to be a, a long-term fix. We're getting lots of uh, text messages in uh, from Bulldog supporters just saying how, you know, how, how happy they have been with this year. But it, the man at the top, the man with all the responsibility, uh, how's Cam uh, changed over, over the last couple of months? Yeah, he's been massive. Like he, he's, um, I mean, he's just like single-handedly, you know, just transformed the culture. You, you walk into this building and there's posters all over the wall of, of effort and this and that. And I feel like he's completely changed what what we value, what we value in the game. And um, you know, people might say, "Oh, look, at, yeah, great try or great line break and things like that." It's the small things that, um, you know, the coaching staff pick up you know that, that might be effort based or whatever and and and, it, and it's painted all over the walls in here it's, it's really valued so it makes you walk out and and, and want to do that on the field um but th- there's there's a million things um but yeah i think i think cameron came with his 
with his um, ideas and systems and he came over and a club that hadn't been exposed to anything like that. Um, yeah, I felt like it, uh, it, we went backwards before we went forwards just in, in the, um, it just in a way that it was just so new to everyone. Um, and yeah, I, I think speaking for myself personally, I remember you know, coming into uh, the preseason of the 2023 season, you know, and there were so many new drills and so many, it was just sort of hard to get, sort of wrap my head around. Um, and, and as time goes on and, and um, yeah, I just, I just think this, um, you know, that there's, there's a part of it of, of getting like, you know, training every day and, 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 and working on being excellent, training on our excellence every day. But it's also like a, he's really built a culture of, yeah, like I said, playing for each other. Um, I feel like we're a really tight knitted group here. And I, I just, I think it's like, I have so much joy playing footy now. Like I really enjoy, I come, I enjoy coming in the train and training's fun. I feel like you're hanging out with your best mates all day. And I feel like that's probably been the biggest thing, you know? So um, I guess wanting to do it, wanting to do all those efforts on the field just come second nature now, just because, you know, I, 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 I love coming in here. Tell you what, Max, I don't, I don't know if you remember this day. You, you may not, but I was sitting with my family at the Cronulla RSL Club and I'm having a bit of a dinner and you guys were there for some reason. I don't know where you were or what you're doing there, but you were there as a whole team. And I saw you all leaving and you're laughing and you're just, there was this camaraderie about it. And I, I said to my wife, I said, you know what, they might be, I hadn't really rated the Bulldogs based on last year. You were conceding 35, 36 points a game. And I thought, geez, something's different here. They, they might be in for one hell of a year. We, do you remember that day? Do you remember what, what were you doing there, by the yeah. way? Uh, we, we, there's a lot of, we, it was that in, during pre-season? Yes. Yeah, we, we, we were doing, I mean, it was early stage of pre-season, so we were doing, um, just to sort of mix it up, we'd have like um, a wrestle session. We had, there's a place in Cronulla, yep. and then from there we'd um, hit the sand dunes, and then I think it might have been after the sand dunes, we, we, all went together to sort of get a feed. It was just a sort of off-site training yeah. session, um, but it, it's been yeah, it, it has been a massive thing of, of doing everything together as a group, you know, and hanging out. And and I know a lot of clubs, like most clubs, uh, you know, uh, emphasise that, but I really feel it here, you know. And it's um, yeah, I just, it's just a really tight it's just a really tight group. So as I said, like there's plenty of laughs. Obviously, when when business gets down to business, it's serious and it's like, you know, but there's plenty of laughs. Um, hey, Maxie, sorry to cut you of... off. Sorry, to cut, we're, we're having so much fun with you. And any time you want to come on SEM, mate, <clears throat> excuse me, you are an absolute talent. One of the best uh, oh, live rugby league players I've ever uh, interviewed, to be honest with you. There's a great text. We haven't got time to read it out. But if you keep listening, I'd love to share it because it's a very, very good text, text from Barthy from Mount Annan. Uh, Maxie King, thanks for joining the Run Home with Joel and Michelle. And just remember this, Max, dreams are free. <laughs> good on you guys. Thanks for having me. See you, Max. What a talent. Great guy.